this is crooked, just put a little tiny cardboard underneath your um, computer. I don't know about you, but I watch, if I watch yarn podcasts, knitting podcasts, I watch them on my computer and not on my phone usually. So if this is crooked. Weird. Okay, Christy Glass here for a stash acquisition update because it's getting out of control and when I get so many things that I'm saving to show you, I, that's when I decide to make a video. So I'm recording this in January actually. I'm not sure when you're seeing this because my schedule is right, but uh, I just wanted to show you some stuff that I have. This is why I have to do the eBay stash because I get so much stuff. Now granted, I knit through it. I am a fast knitter. I don't know if I'm a fast knitter. I spend a lot of time knitting and I, so I go through it. Uh, and so I'm not sure where to start because all of it is fantastic. We'll just start right here. I decided to subscribe to Pom Pom Magazine, which means I get the digital and the print and this came in the mail. It's so beautiful, isn't it? After I interviewed the Pom Pom Girls, I was like, even if I don't knit a single thing from your magazines, I just want them because they're so pretty. So I got this one. This is the uh, quarter. It's quarterly, so it comes out four times a year. This is Vivid Winter, and I just I needed a I needed that. I needed a little brightness for the winter, you know, to just get you through. So that's one of my first acquisitions. And then recently, I was gifted this interesting item. So this I'm gonna try to get this right. This is from Carrie, and she's in. Santiago, Chile, and her business is a word I can't say, so I'm going to type it up here, but it's A-L-T-O-R-R-E-L-I-E-V-E dot Etsy dot com, so it's like autorelief dot Etsy dot com to us Americans, and she makes little like button things, like labels, and I'm really not sure it's going to show up here on the screen, but these are like acrylic buttons with my logo on it, Christy Glass Knits. They're clear, they're about the size of a dime, maybe smaller, and you're supposed to peel off. So there's like a little protected plastic on here, but you're supposed to peel it off, and then there's, you see it? It says Christy Glass Knits on it. It's super tiny. But that was a very sweet gift, and what I like about it is you can, you can put it on your hat. So I actually sewed one to the black patch of this hat. Now you can see it. So it's really small and subtle, but it kind of, can you see it glow, like it kind of shines there? I was picking up the light for one second. No, it's not. But then it gives my hat a little like label like, I knit this, which I think is fun. Also, I, uh, just a side note, I really tried to secure this pom pom, which I did. Look, it's not going anywhere. But I accidentally like poked it through with this giant chenille needle. And it's kind of, there's a string actually right here on the side, which you may or may not be able to see. And so it's, I accidentally sort of sewed it lopsided. So I need to fix that. I'm going to try that technique that Very Pink Knits put out recently with a button where you sew it, you put a, a giant button, like an actual physical button on the inside of the hat and sew it to the button. I'm going to try that. All right, I recently interviewed Seventh Floor Yarn. They're going to be up uh, during Mother's Day, and they gifted me this beautiful MCN, this Erin Waite. I think that'll be such a nice hat, right? Mixed berries and cream is the color. So my colors, love it! And then I bought from them this needle gauge. It's acrylic, and it's really interesting because on camera you can see, like, this half looks orange and this, this half looks pink. And in person it kind of plays with your eyes also. Hey. It plays with it plays with the light, so you're kind of like it's neon orange pink. It's like both, but I love that it's that perfect four inch square. Love the color, and it has the needle gauge on the bottom, so I had to have that. That's Seventh Floor Yarns. They're also on Etsy. Let's see if it's on the label here. No, but I'll put a link to their shop down below. Okay, what else? So I've been recently following. I need a drink. Oh my gosh, this is so stressful. I've recently been following Wooly & Co on Instagram and they sent me a bag with their pins. They have this whole set of enamel pins that they have. So here's the little puppies with the ball of yarn. I'm not sure if they actually own these dogs or if they just like those dogs. I don't know if there's a story behind that one. 
Here's a really fun like asymmetrical design sweater with various stitches on it. Here's uh, their bag, Create Connect Unwind, Wooly & Co. And finally, this is, must be one of their logos also with the and. That was so sweet of them to send me the pins because pins are like having an uprising right now. It's kind of a thing. And that was a very sweet gift. So thank you, Aviva, and all the folks at Willie & Co. I recently uh, got some Spin Cycle. Okay, this is actually my first Spin Cycle. Can you believe it? I've been a fan for them for a long time, and I just, every time I think about it, I just can't pull the trigger. And finally, I decided I'm doing it. I'm just getting my first skein of uh, Spin Cycle yarn. This is the Knit Fast Die Heart. Uh, sorry, I cannot read. Knit Fast, Die Young, super bulky weight, 100% American wool, it's 100 yards. The colorway is called Ladies First, and let's see, there's lots of stuff back here. Oh, it says Fast, there's a noun, Fast. And this is funny, if you pick your yarns to match your tattoos, if you learn to knit in prison, or if you're slanging to support your fiber habit, then welcome to your new yarn addiction. So, that's funny. And then it just talks more about their business right here and has their website. So I love this color, of course. And I think I'm gonna make a hat. I know I'm gonna make a hat out of this. And I'm gonna wear it because I want to. So that's my spin cycle. I'm really excited to swift this up. I've been waiting for this video to show it to you because I like showing it to you in the hank. Ah. I'm going to be doing a project, actually. After I put up the Wild Prairie shawl on my channel and talked about how I really wanted to make it in the giant version, I was contacted by the Fiberists and so we talked back and forth and they ended up sending me yarn for my next Wild Prairie which will be knit up so quickly. So I chose this color, it's called Emerald. And their whole shtick is like the scientific, the periodic, uh, what is it, periodic table of elements. It's been a long time since I studied that. So their pin looks like that. Isn't that cute? And then they also have like here where it says emerald. Above it, there's the, what is it called? The code? The, it's the, what it, okay, periodic table of elements. It's like the elements that make an emerald. So it's capital BE3, capital AL2, capital SI, capital O3, 6. There's some parentheses involved. So I think that is so clever. I love when people really think about their indie dye business and make it a sort of themed business. So they sent me two of these so I can make <gasps> my new wild prairie shawl. I'm so excited because I think you make it on like 17 needles. Yeah, it's going to buy go by so quickly. And my goal is to have this done by St. Patrick's Day so I can wear it in Scotland on St. Patrick's Day. I know. I'm hoping to interview them for Manch. It's on the books, but sometimes these things fall through. So I usually don't announce things, but I will say when it happens, it's going to happen. Hopefully it happens. If it's not for Manch, it'll be another time because I go to their town um, periodically. And uh, so Someday I will definitely be interviewing them and when that time comes I'm going to have a giveaway So I'm just going to show you what's for the giveaway now mm -hmm. This one is called Gold which is capital AU So there's one skein of this and then also this is a different so this base the big one the super bulky is Curie Luxe super bulky 100% um, uh, Merino wool and then this base is their Hopper fingering, which is merino and words I can't read. Oh, here we go. Merino wool, yak, and silk. So it's 60% merino and then 20 yak, 20 silk. It is so soft and has a nice shimmer to it. This is fingering weight, as I just said, and it's a natural. So this one will be up for the giveaway also. And it's 398 yards. So stay tuned for that. Also a pin comes with the giveaway. So that's going to be exciting. It's not right now. Don't comment below to win that. That's not today. That'll be later. I recently received a gift from a viewer and I will keep her anonymous, but I just wanted to show you what she sent me because it was amazing. It, it was shocking and incredible. First of all, she sent me some sock yarn. So this is 464 yards of British Blue Face Lester. It's just so beautiful. It's trailing clouds, mind the gap. And it's self-striping. And look how cute those socks are going to be. Look at that sock. Isn't that so beautiful? 
Now I haven't quite gotten on the socks bandwagon yet, but if anything is gonna motivate me to knit socks, it'll be this beautiful self-striping yarn. Seriously. She also sent me Perfect Sock Self-Striping by Must Stash Yarns. This is an 80-20 with merino and nylon. This color is called Everything is Awesome. Isn't that beautiful? So these two together were just like amazing. Then this one is by the White, oh, this is also mustache yarn and it's called The White Album. So I guess she did a, a, a Beetle Mania colorway series. And this is, let's see, this is 7525, 440 yards, and it's also the self striping yarn and more of a natural. So that was so sweet. And then I guess she was a member of the Plucky Club, the Cashmere Luxury Plucky Club. And there was some yarn that she received. There was some yarn that she received that wasn't her colors. This is where I was just like, are you kidding me right now? So she sent me this plucky cashmere. It's 280 yards each. And the color is just desserts. Like this is sport weight cashmere, you guys. Pure cashmere by plucky. Which is some of the best cashmere out there. And if that were not enough, so this was the September 2016 colorway, and if that was not enough, she also sent me three more skeins of Flower Child. Yes, this is also cashmere. So as soon as I opened this package, I was gobsmacked. I was like, are you kidding me? Six skeins of cashmere? Plucky cashmere? And the sock yarn? She also sent me snacks and buttons. So that was an incredible gift. And I'm so grateful for it because I know that she, she said, these are my colors and it's, why would it go, you know, it shouldn't go to waste. It should go to the right person. I do think I'm the right person. I do. I think I'm the right person for that. So I immediately went to Ravelry and started pinning and tagging patterns. I don't know what I'm going to make with it yet because it just needs to sit for a minute and just be with me. And then it will come to me and I will know what to make. But I was so blown away, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for thinking of me, and I hope that I can do your yarn babies justice as you pass them along to the next person. Some of you may remember Kim Dyes Yarns, Kim's, Kim Dyes Yarn, I think it's Kim Dyes Yarn, Yarn. I did a mini tour booth, booth tour, I always say tour booth, <laughs> I'm like tour guide. I did a mini booth tour of hers at Stitches Midwest and bought this beautiful MCN to make a shawl. I haven't made it yet, yet but it's one of my you know, most prized possessions in my stash. And she sent me this hand spun. It's um, called Cathedral Windows, which it totally looks like that. It's yak and silk, 50-50. And it's 102 yards. And she wrote a little note, this will felt. So it's a crazy combination. So the, the yak really grounds it and gives it this halo. And then the silk is what makes it look like that cathedral window. Isn't that beautiful? So she's a really talented dyer and spinner. And she sent this to me. And I just wanted to show that to you because she's very versatile in what she makes. Like this is really nothing like what I bought from her. What I bought from her was like a very sort of natural colored yarn with a lot of different speckles and things. And so this is just I wouldn't have thought of this when I thought of her yarn, but maybe she's like going a different direction. So this is your speed, this yak and silk. You should really check her out because it's a little different from what I showed you when I was at Stitches Midwest. So thank you for that, Kim. Two more. I have been shopping at Yarn Scout, which is a local yarn shop in Montana. I know, but they have a great online presence and she is a wonderful stockist of indie dyed yarns, especially Hedgehog. One night I just decided, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look at, see what she has. And I was suddenly inspired to know what yarn I wanted for my Blue Sand cardigan. So I've been looking at the Blue Sand for a long time. The very first Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck sweater video that I made, I saw several Blue Sands and I was like, I want to make that sweater. It's a DK weight sweater. And at first I was toying with some Tannis Fiber Arts, but I'm like, no, I just want to use that for something else. And I know that I really like the, the Merino DK base of Hedgehog. It's very squishy and soft and just really lovely to, to work with. And I loved also my Aaron Waite Hedgehog sweater that I, that was my Rhinebeck sweater. So I was hoping, I am hoping 
that this sweater will be really nice to wear. I have some DK in my eyeball shawl and I like how that feels against my skin. So here it is, I picked it out. This is going to be, so the blue sand cardigan is a long open cardigan and it has, you can do any combinations you want and I've seen several different combinations but I wanted to go exactly with what the pattern had just so I, know I, had, I knew I had the right yardage and stuff. So the main color that's light and then a contrast color that's very similar. It's like just like a shade darker than the light, kind of like on a paint chip. And then a pop. So that's three colors. So the main body for mine will be teacup, which I've been wanting to use teacup for a long time. I actually wanted teacup for my eyeball shawl, but there was no teacup uh, when I was shopping. So I finally got my teacup. Isn't it beautiful? So it's that natural color with just a little bit of browns, a little bit of pinks in it. And this is so nice and squishy, this Merino DK Hedgehog. I'll just hold one up, maybe it's easier. Isn't that pretty? Just the right amount of speckles for a large piece of sweater. You kind of have to think about, so when I built my house, I, was, I wanted to, to paint it like turquoise. And the builder was like, that's just a lot of surface area for turquoise. <laughs> he talked me out of it. So I think sometimes you have to think about, if you have a lot of fabric, what is that gonna look like? You know, Do you want it to be all those crazy speckles or do you want something more subtle? So I went with the more subtle. Okay, so this is the base. And then that first contrasting stripe that's not so dark, you know, not so contrast, just very similar to the base is gonna be Artifact. I have another skein of this Artifact in the Skinny Singles that I got at Nitty City. It reads differently to me. This one has more pink in it, which I'm grateful for because I think it ties in the teacup well. And I like that little rogue blue every once in a while. There's a little bit of blue in teacup too. Can you see there's some blue in here? Just a little bit. Just a little bit of blue in there. So I think this will look really nice as that non-contrast, contrasty stripe. And then the pop is going to be, is this N-A-I-V-E? Do you say that naive? Naive? Nave, I'm thinking of Nave Campbell, but that's not how she spells her name, right? Isn't it naive? I, I'm really stuck on this word. So this is the pop at the top. So in all, I guess this one could have been a little bit brighter. And there was another one I was thinking about getting, but I, I, the screen was not completely true. Like when I saw, what I saw, what I thought I was buying, it's a little lighter than I expected, but it still works with these three together. So I'm not upset at all. I think it's gonna be such a nice, sweet cardigan. And it may be really good for spring. You know those transition months with the weather when you can just throw something on that's a little longer and it will keep you warm? Yeah, I'm excited about this garment, okay? Not sure when I'm gonna start it, but now I have the yarn for it, which means I can dream about it and then it will get in the queue. After I had checked out on Yarn Scout, I was checking out her feed and realized she had Ching yarn and I wanted to get some Ching yarn. And I had recently finished the Jelly Roll sweater for my baby niece and then thought, you know what? The Ching yarn is what I want for my Jelly Roll. I was gonna shop for my Jelly Roll in Edinburgh when I go, and then I saw this Ching, and I'm so into MCN right now that I was like, I'm just gonna get some N MCN Ching. Now people ask me what that stands for. I didn't know either. It's Merino Cashmere Nylon. That's what it stands for. So that 10 or 20% or 15% of cashmere that's mixed in makes a lot of difference with the feeling of the yarn, and I'm kind of like really on an MCN kick right now. So the Jelly Roll sweater is this crazy indie dye sweater. It has these two Jelly Rolls at the top, kind of like a Jelly Roll sock maybe you've seen. And then it has a color work yoke that kind of looks like piano keys if you have a very high contrast between the two colors. So it's just like one by one and then two by one and then two by two, something like that. There's like different combinations of the, of the very graphic yoke. And so the first two colors used in the yoke are gonna be these. So this one is called Firaja, F-I-R-A-J-A. -A. This one is called Black Hair. And this basically, this skein of yarn basically has all my favorites in it. My gray, my pink, my red, and that mint green. And things that I would never put this together. We should open this, don't you think? Let's open it. It even has, it kind of looks a little bit orange. Okay, so I'm hoping there's enough gray to really carry. I think there is. Isn't that cool? So I really think for the Jelly Roll, it's important to have a, at least one crazy, crazy skein. And this is my crazy skein for Jelly Roll. And then it will be next to this one. 
in that top color work. So there will be one roll that's completely, sorry, the clouds are acting crazy today. They're making my light mess up. So one of the rolls will be completely this color. That'll be just one entire roll. And then one roll will be this color. And then these two together will be side by side for the color work. Yoke. After all the color work is done with that, there's a row of the red with the body color, which is this. This is pangolin, P-A-N-G-O-L-I-N. I don't know how to say that, okay? Now this one has a couple of these, yes. Okay, this has black in it, and it has the same red color in it, okay? Look at that. <gasps> that should be slow motion. Let's do it again. Okay, so these two will then have a row of, of color work together. Yes. Yes! And then the rest of the sweater will be this. Uh huh. It's gonna be so good. <gasps> this is gonna be so good. I, this is gonna be hard for me to wait on this one. I really wanna know this. Oh, it's so soft. <gasps> this is so soft. So that was my second yarn scout. I basically bought two sweaters quantity of yarn at Yarn Scout in a two day period. And they ship so quickly and they have such a good. Um, such a great range of products. So I highly recommend Yarn Scout. That's my new go-to for crazy indie dye stuff. And I really think you should start shopping there and supporting that business. And she has wonderful customer service. In fact, she wrote me a note. I don't even know. She just was like, hey, I just really appreciate your repeat business. Uh, okay. Just a small note like that goes such a long way. So Yarn Scout. Can't say it enough. Yarnscout.com. She did not give me a discount. She did not pay me to say it. I'm just public service announcement to all you knitters out there. That's your new go-to when you want to make the crazy awesome stuff. That's it. That's my stash positions. Uh, I hopefully I will not be back until after Scotland because I really need more yarn. Like I need a hole in the head to be honest with you. It's like getting too much here. I got to knit faster. Um, but I just I don't I don't love so much telling you guys about what I'm working on because sometimes I shift and change and. Then I'll get questions like, whatever happened to that, blah, blah, blah. So, not that I said that in a very bad tone. I'm sorry. It doesn't bother me when you ask me. But that's one reason why I don't keep you abreast of what I'm actually knitting on because sometimes I have a change of plans. But I have no problem showing you what I have acquired, why I have acquired it, and what I plan on making with it. But again, things could always change. So thanks for checking in here today. I hope you're enjoying everything I'm putting out on the channel. I'm working hard to provide you with some really fun things here. And I really always appreciate you stopping by and your support. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.